Hey what is up guys welcome back to the channel and welcome back to Gran Turismo 7. So with the Suzuki Escudo Pikes Pete returning after nearly 9 months away I thought it was time to do an updated 2023 review. So with update 1.31 we've got a massive overhaul in the performance points of cars meaning the Suzuki it lost around about 70 pp overall from what it was like the first time it was in the Legends car dealer. So I thought I'd basically go ahead and put it to the test around the Nordschleife to see if it still holds up and if there'd be any difference in its time from 2022 to now in 2023. So if you want to buy this car for yourself, you can buy it for 1.7 million from the legendary car dealer from today. Because of how it got glitched last time, I fully recommend picking one up as soon as you can before this leaves the Legends car dealer, just in case it seems to happen again. Coming in at 1.7 million, it's a fair and reasonable price. It's putting out 981 brake horsepower, it's four wheel drive, and it weighs only 800 kilograms. So if you've never joined me for a car review, this is exactly how it works. With this being not a road car, we basically will take it around a Nordschleife for a hot lap to see where it ranks on our overall lap time leaderboard and whilst obviously the footage is playing in the background I'll give you my opinion on the car overall and just some things I like about it and some things I don't. So with all that being said how does the Suzuki hold up in 2023? This is the first time this car has returned since July of 2022. It was gone for the longest time mainly due to a glitch in the rotation for both this and the Ford Roadster. Now it's not known if the Ford will have a fix for this update or if that will be at a later date, but for sure they have got the Suzuki fixed, at least for now anyway. There's always the risk that, you know, it could be completely messed up again and could disappear at any time. I'm pleased to say though, even with the latest update, the Pikes Peak feels absolutely fantastic and you cannot really notice any change in the overall feel of the car. It's still a very grippy car, it's still very fast and it still has that massive turbo lag that it's pretty much known for. Overall, this was a great purchase at the time in 2022 and in all honesty, it's the exact same in 2023. This is perhaps the most useful car in the entire game just for the fact that it can be built in almost any way Way you really want it to whether you want a speed build or a you know fuel consumption build it's overall a fantastic car that's very very kind on its tires but if we're going to talk about its one lap pace there's probably only one downside to it and that's what i mentioned turbo lag there's a very simple way to counter that turbo lag and that is keep the revs up as high as possible if you let them drop below a certain point or if you go in a gear that's far too high you'll get a massive amount of turbo lag with this car, but it's just part of its charm. Overall, in terms of Gran Turismo 7, this car still holds up as one of the craziest cars in Gran Turismo history. If you know as far back as Gran Turismo 2, it was pretty much the OP car there, and then in Gran Turismo 3, it was the car that could essentially wheelie and throw itself at 3,000 miles per hour, and it still holds true in Gran Turismo 7. It's very much a crazy vehicle. You can get some ridiculous builds going with it, and yet you can wheelie it i haven't actually tested it in terms of the latest update see if it is still possible but at the time that this first release you could essentially get it wheeling on the special stage x so it's essentially the car that doesn't really have any downsides and coming in at 1.7 million it seems a very fair price for the performance you're getting as well as its usability it is a fantastic purchase and definitely one that shouldn't be slept on the fact that this car can run at pretty much all events apart from the 800pp at Spa just due to the lack of headlights means that it's perhaps the most versatile car to exist in the entirety of GT7, maybe only closely matched by something like the CLK. But even then if you compare it from a price perspective, the Suzuki Escudo is an absolute bargain coming in at only 1.7 million compared to the 6 million plus that you'd need for something like the CLK. So overall it really is a lot of bang for your buck and you can essentially just earn the credits you need for this car in around about one hour. Anything after that you're pretty much making profit on this thing and it is a fantastic car overall. I've easily made over 50 million just off of this car alone and that really is testament to how good it is. It seems to stand the test of time no matter what kind of updates the polyphony throw at us whether they try and patch it or fix it out you know or whether they you know like they do in this update give a massive pp overhaul it just seems to survive a bit like a little bit of a cockroach 
do I think that going into the future, no matter what Polyphony kind of throw at it in terms of PP changes and such, do I think this car will kind of hold up and still be as useful? 100%. I, I honestly think it's one of those cars that will always kind of survive PP nerfs and anything like that. The fact that you don't really have to glitch it either to kind of get it under these kind of limits means that it's a fantastic car and a fantastic kind of base for a build. So if you're a more newer Gran Turismo player, I guess coming in around GT Sport, you may not really know how crazy this car is. In fact, it took a bit of a hiatus in that game. It didn't return until GT7. Previous to that, it was in Gran Turismo 6. It is basically one of the Gran Turismo cars. It's massively made popular due to the fact that it was absolutely nuts in some of the older games. And whilst I don't think it's as crazy today, just to the fact that some of the VGT cars kind of, you know, I guess fall into that place of being just the most weird and wacky cars in the game, it's still certainly a striking vehicle to look at and use. The fact that all of this weird and wacky era was pretty much fully usable and not just for show really does give this car a super weird and really unique look. The fact that it's got the massive rear wing, it's got splitters, it's got massive air intakes pretty much everywhere, just gives it probably one of the most unique looking vehicle looks in the entirety of Gran Turismo and it's absolutely unmistakable. It really is a fantastic looking car while still looking very very strange all these years later. So with all that being said let's go ahead and look how this car ranks on our lap time leaderboard. So as you can see from the 2022 lap it's lost around about 20 seconds. Now this is due to a bunch of changes since that update. The fact that the physics have been changed multiple times and the car overall has lost a few performance points. That is still a fantastic time. So in my honest opinion should you pick this car up in 2023 is it still as usable as ever? 100% and I feel like this will be a car that will stand the test of time no matter what Polyphony do to this game the Escudo will always survive. So there we have it that is an updated 2023 review for the Suzuki Escudo Pikes Peak. It's still as usable as ever, it's still as fast as ever and it's still as wacky as it's ever been and in my honest opinion this is one of the best cars in the entirety of Gran Turismo 7. And now thankfully due to Polyphony actually fixing the glitch with its rotation everybody can finally get their hands on this car including newer players that may have not been around when this car first got released so that's going to be it from me today don't forget to like comment subscribe turn those notifications on so you don't miss an upload from me i upload gt7 and motorsport content each and every day for your viewing pleasure i will see you all in the next one take care guys peace